Our planet is home to places that have baffled explorers and scientists for centuries. These mysterious locations hold secrets and continue to defy explanation. So for today's video, we're going to embark on a journey to unveil the top 15 most mysterious locations on Earth. Starting with number 15, the Mapemi Silent Zone. The Mapemi Silent Zone in the desolate expanse of Mexico's Chihuahuan Desert is a place shrouded in both intrigue and mystery. Its reputation as a hotbed of unexplained phenomenon and peculiar occurrences has earned it a place in the annals of the world's most enigmatic locations. What makes the Mapemi Silent Zone particularly intriguing is its eerie propensity to silence radio waves. In the heart of this roughly 50 square kilometer area, radio signals inexplicably vanish into thin air, leaving communication in disarray. This strange phenomenon has earned it the moniker of the Zone of Silence. Adding to the mystery are tales of bizarre magnetic anomalies. Compasses spin wildly and metal objects appear to defy the laws of physics as they behave erratically within this zone. Some speculate that the magnetic disturbances may be linked to the area's geological composition. The history of the Mapimi Silent Zone is equally as puzzling. In 1970, the Athena missile launched by the United States veered off course and crashed into this remote desert region sparking rumors of a connection between the missile incident and the zone's unusual properties. Legends of UFO sightings and encounters with otherworldly beings also swirl around this zone, further deepening its aura of mystery. When skeptics dismiss these claims, they contribute to the area's reputation as a hub of unexplained phenomenon. Oddly enough, the zone's geographic proximity to the famous Bermuda Triangle has led some to ponder if there might be a cosmic connection between these two intriguing locations. Number 14. The Trabuk Caves There are countless caves around the globe, but the Trabuk Caves in southern France are unique among them all, due to a mysterious and stunning geological oddity known as the 100,000 Soldiers. This unexplained natural wonder stands out within the all-around beautiful Trebuk Caves, the largest network of underground passages in the Savannah. Thousands upon thousands of strangely short concretions are clustered together in a small area. Standing side by side, they resemble an enormous army of soldier figurines. The first explorers to come across this awesome site called it an army of 100,000 soldiers, and the name stuck. This kind of geological formation has not been found anywhere else in the world, and still today geologists don't know how these formations were created. Stalagmites and stalactites are commonly found in pairs. The dripping water from the ceiling creates stalactites that fall to the ground and create stalagmites. But in the case of the 100,000 soldiers, the concretions blanket the cave floor without any stalactites above. Scientists have posed theories over the years, but none have ever sufficiently explained the geological anomaly. Its origins remain a scientific mystery to this day. The splendor of these caves doesn't stop at the 100,000 soldiers. The network is adorned with a colorful rainbow of minerals, waterfalls, and pools, and it's got a long and rich history. The caves have been known and used since antiquity, though it wasn't until the 1950s that an artificial tunnel was dug allowing easy access into the cavern. The underground tunnels provided shelter for smugglers in the Middle Ages and Huguenots during the religious wars in the 18th century. Scientific exploration of the cave started in 1823. By now, around six miles of caves have been explored, but speleologists expect the subterranean network to cover two or three times that size, as the limestone rock here is just an incredible maze. Number 13. Cave of the Seven Palaces The hauntingly crypt-like Cave of the Seven Palaces, or Cueva de los Siete Palacios, is an ancient site and the strangely named home of Balmuñecar's worthy archaeological museum, containing fascinating exhibits from local digs, including the oldest writing discovered anywhere on the Iberian Peninsula. The space now occupied by the museum consists of seven stone-built alcoves linked by a central vaulted passage. The exact nature and purpose of the dark and mysterious chamber's origins divides opinions. The most accepted theory is that these vaults and alcoves were created by first-century Roman rulers of Almunyekar. Having run out of building space on the crowded coastal hill occupied by the town, Roman administrators had the cave constructed to support a broad platform, projecting off the hillside increasing usable space. It is supposed that the platform provided the foundation for the construction of a grand building, possibly a temple, palace, or forum, but the only people who know the truth are long gone now. Despite the site being mostly Roman in origin, evidence of human activity stretching back to the Bronze Age has been found in the cave. 
which is unsurprising given Amunyekar's history as one of Europe's oldest inhabited settlements. Whatever its original purpose was, this space eventually became used as a cesspit, before being repurposed in the 1980s for a less smelly role as a home for some of the amazing artifacts discovered in the vicinity of the town, including a beautiful stone vessel decorated with the earliest known writing discovered anywhere in Spain or Portugal. Number 12. Pumaponku Pumaponku, an ancient archaeological site near Tiwanaku in Bolivia, remains one of history's most intriguing enigmas. Its exquisite stone masonry baffles modern engineers and archaeologists. The site's massive stone blocks, meticulously crafted and fitted with intricate precision, raise profound questions about the civilization that built it and the techniques employed. The mystery deepens as researchers grapple with Pumapunku's purpose. Was it a religious sanctuary, a ceremonial complex, administrative center, or something else entirely? The site's location near the Tiwanaku civilization adds complexity to its role within the larger cultural context. Equally perplexing is the origin of the colossal stone blocks. How were stones, some weighing several tons, transported from distant quarries to this place? The ability to manipulate and assemble such massive stones defies conventional understanding of the civilization's tools and methods. Pumapunku's state of disarray adds to its allure. The scattered and broken stones hint at potential catastrophic events, sparking speculation about earthquakes or other natural disasters that could have contributed to the site's decline. Theories about Pumapunku's construction have ventured into unconventional territories, with suggestions of advanced lost technologies or even extraterrestrial involvement. While these hypotheses remain speculative, they emphasize the magnitude of the site's mysteries. The truth is, we'll never really know the truth, and sometimes that can be just as fun. Number 11. Winchester Mystery House In 1886, an eccentric woman named Sarah Winchester traveled from New Haven, Connecticut to San Jose, California to start a new life. She purchased a small eight-room farmhouse and started a small renovation project that would take 36 years and $5.5 million, only stopping when she passed away in 1922. By the time she was done, the Winchester Mansion was a modern marvel with indoor plumbing, multiple elevators, a hot shower, and central heating. It had over 160 rooms and 40 bedrooms, 10,000 windows, and even two basements. Of course, that's not all that's unique about the house. Not all the 2,000 doors in there can be walked through. One leads up an 8-foot drop to a kitchen sink, another to a 15-foot drop into bushes in the garden below. Staircases lead straight into ceilings, expensive Tiffany-stained glass windows were installed in places where they would get no light, and there are more secret passages than in Narnia. A particularly odd delight is a cabinet that, when opened, extends through 30 rooms of the house. No one is quite sure why Mrs. Winchester demanded constant changes to her very large house. Of course, there are stories. The most prevalent one is that Mrs. Winchester was haunted by the spirits of those killed by the Winchester rifle, which her late husband's company had invented. After her husband passed away, a psychic told her that to evade the spirits, she would have to move out west, buy a home, and build nonstop. Some theories say that she believed that as soon as construction was complete, she would die, while other theories suggest that she built the house like a maze in order to keep her paranormal tormentors at bay and lost in the many intricacies of the building. As the theory goes, to avoid them, she would sleep in a different bedroom every night and take labyrinthine paths through her own home. A massive earthquake struck the Bay Area in 1906 and toppled the top three stories of the house, damaging the other four stories along with it. Some say Sarah Winchester took this as a sign from the spirits that she was too close to completion and ordered the unfinished front half of the house to be boarded up. Number 10. Teotihuacan Teotihuacan, often hailed as the City of the Gods, stands out as one of the most captivating and enigmatic archaeological sites on Earth. This ancient city, which flourished between the 1st and 7th centuries CE, continues to bewilder researchers and historians with its unanswered questions and its elusive past. The most compelling and enduring mystery surrounding Teotihuacan is the identity of its builders. Who built it and how? Despite extensive research and excavation, the civilization responsible for the city's construction remains elusive. The Aztecs believe Teotihuacan was the work of gods, but conclusive evidence linking it to any known pre-Columbian civilization is notably absent. The absence of inscriptions or written records has left a void in our understanding of the city's origins, sparking our curiosity about the advanced culture that once thrived there. 
At the heart of Teotihuacan stands the colossal Pyramid of the Sun, ranked as the third largest pyramid globally. Its sheer size and meticulous alignment with celestial events, including the Sun's passage, raise questions about the astronomical and engineering knowledge possessed by its builders. This pyramid's purpose, beyond its awe-inspiring stature, remains a source of speculation and debate. Teotihuacan's rich archaeological record reveals a complex culture with elaborate religious and ritualistic practices. Human sacrifices were likely a prominent feature of these ceremonies, attesting to the city's spiritual depth. Furthermore, the precise alignment of key structures with celestial events underscores an advanced understanding of astronomy, leaving us to ponder the purpose behind this knowledge. Around the 7th century, Teotihuacan experienced a mysterious and sudden abandonment, with its population dispersing. Numerous theories have been proposed to explain this exodus, ranging from social unrest to environmental factors like drought. Nevertheless, the true cause remains obscured by the passage of time. Number 9. The Devil's Kettle Waterfall Tucked away in the heart of Minnesota's Judge C. R. Magny State Park lies an enigmatic and mesmerizing natural wonder known as the Devil's Kettle. This peculiar waterfall has captured the imagination of adventurers, scientists, and curious minds alike due to its mysterious and confounding nature. The Devil's Kettle is not a towering waterfall in the conventional sense, as it stands at a modest height of about 50 feet. However, it's not the height of the waterfall that draws in visitors and researchers alike. Rather, it's the mysterious and seemingly inexplicable phenomenon happening at its base. The true enigma of the Devil's Kettle lies in the fate of the water that disappears into the deep, dark hole. Despite numerous attempts to uncover its destination, scientists and explorers have been left puzzled and mystified. Theories abound regarding the fate of the water, but none have been conclusively proven. Some speculate that the water simply rejoins the main flow of the river underground, resurfacing downstream. Others believe that it might be diverted into an underground aquifer or cavern system. However, no definitive evidence have been found to support any of these hypotheses. Adding to the intrigue, efforts to solve the mystery have included dye tests, dyeing the water and tracking it downstream, and even sending objects with GPS trackers into the hole, none of which have yielded definitive answers. Number 8. El Elecoide Rising up out of the Venezuelan slums, the eye-catching complex known as El Helicoide, the Helix, looks like something out of a supervillain's dream, and with its intelligence headquarters, mysterious prison, and general air of secrecy, it acts the part as well. Designed to be an ultra-modern retail destination, construction began on the Helix complex in 1956. The tiered shopping center was set to have a five-star hotel, a park, and floors of luxury shopping. This massive mall would have allowed people to drive their cars right into the complex and park right near the shops they wanted to visit. Built on a pre-existing hill in Caracas, the pyramid-like structure jutted impressively from the surrounding neighborhood. Unfortunately, funding for the project ran dry in the 1960s, and work on the site slowed to a trickle. Despite the inclusion of a Buckminster Fuller geodesic dome, which was placed like a cap atop the hill, Eventually, the helix was completed as six concentric levels of the building were built onto shelves carved out of the hill, with the dream of an easily accessible mecca of retail and luxury scuttled due to money woes, the Venezuelan state beginning to use the space for a number of its agencies. This centralization of government power led to a damaging bombing in 1992. However, the structure was rebuilt and the whole complex is now home to the Directorate of Intelligence and Prevention Services, more commonly referred to as DSIP. This secretive intelligence agency headquarters in the eccentric building and also has started the not-so-secret prison at the site. Like many such facilities, the prisoners are often held without charge and have reported a myriad of human rights abuses from within this building. In the real world, most shady government agencies try to remain under the radar, but the shadow agents of the Helix seem to have taken a page from a different book, probably a comic book. Moving on to number 7, Frenier Cemetery. In 1915, a faith healer living in the small town of Frenier, 25 miles west of New Orleans, predicted that she would take the town with her when she died. No one believed her until it was too late. Her name was Julia Brown, and she was a traitus in the early years of the 20th century. Locals would come to Julia for a cure for what ailed them, but when her remedies weren't needed, people stayed away in fear. While Julia's curatives were powerful, she was rumored to be a voodoo priestess. She was also known to be an oracle. Unless they were coming for her for a remedy, townspeople mostly only saw Julia from her front porch, where she would sit in her rocking chair, play guitar, and sing. 
Several times she had correctly predicted disasters in surrounding towns. In her most ominous ditty, Julia sang, One day I'm gonna die and take the whole town with me. Her premonition came true. When Julia passed, the entire town attended her funeral, perhaps out of guilt or in an attempt to curry favor with the voodoo priestess's spirit. The ceremony took place on September 29th, the very day that New Orleans hurricane of 1915 struck. The Category 4 storm swept through Louisiana, flattening small towns in its path like Frenier. Without a proper weather prediction system, no one saw it coming. All of the town's folk died except for two, who had left Frenier for the day. The survivors erected a graveyard for Frenier's deceased residents. They were all buried in a mass grave and later given a fence and wooden grave markers. The swampland is believed to be haunted by the voodoo priestess Julia Brown, whose prediction, or perhaps curse, should have been heeded. Her grave is removed from the rest by about a hundred yards, which is probably how she would have wanted it. Number 6. Prague's Dripstone Wall Resting at the heart of Prague's Baroque palace grounds is a famously eerie wall, surrounded by lush gardens. It's constructed at the behest of Albrecht von Wallenstein between 1623 and 1630. The Wallenstein Palace enjoys a century-long first life as a magnificent private residence for various generations of the Wallenstein family. At the close of World War II, the land fell into the hands of the state government, which repurposed the palace's main buildings to serve as a seat of operation for the Senate of Chechia. Now, despite the elite negotiations that always taken place inside the palace's handsome corridors, it's the Wallenstein's palace's massive network of complex geometric gardens that remain the biggest draw for the public since 2002. Fashioned in an early Baroque style, the grounds were partitioned into several distinct areas, the most secluded and fascinating of which was known as the Grotto. In this portion of the garden, aspects of real and artificial elements of nature commingle, creating an eerie, unreal landscape. Here, grotesques were allowed to reign supreme, including imagery of snakes, monsters, and random distorted faces, while an aviary provided a crucial acoustic element. Contemporary visitors to the grotto remain mostly struck by the dripstone wall, created by things that, from a distance, seem to be dripping skulls. Closer investigation reveals that the wall is made from a haunting, uncanny assemblage of stalactite-like rocks. Signs along the wall note that if one stares hard enough, it's possible to make out a human and animal face peering out from within the wall's recesses. Adding further fuel to the site's disconcerting nature are other strategically placed clues that the dripstone wall itself could, perhaps, contain a secret passageway winding through its interior, accessible only by those bright enough to discern the pattern of access. Throughout nearly 500 years of existence, no one seemed to have found a way in, though. But thankfully, that hasn't yet stopped visitors from dreaming about solving this ultimate mystery. Number 5. The Chase Vault The Chase Vault, located in the Barbados Cemetery of the Christ Church Parish, is a fairly unremarkable, semi-sunken tomb, save for the repeated stories of the coffins inside being thrown around by mysterious forces. The vault was originally built in 1724, but was purchased by the Chase family when Mary Ann Chase died at the tender age of two. The little girl was placed in the vault in a lead coffin along with the vault's single other occupant, who was interred in a wooden coffin. Just a few short years later, Mary Ann's sister was also buried in the tomb after starving herself to death. Death continued to plague the Chase family when the sister's father, Thomas, died around a month after his eldest daughter. However, when the thick marble slab that sealed the entrance to the vault was removed, the burial team discovered that three coffins inside had been violently tossed around and were standing against the walls of the tomb in seeming disarray. There was no evidence of human tampering with the sealed vault, and none of the other vaults in the cemetery had been affected in the same way, eliminating the possibility of an earthquake or flood. Regardless, all of the coffins were placed back in their original places, and Thomas's was added to the orderly pile. Years later, when the vault was once again opened to add another body to the pile, they found the coffins had been tossed around once again and were lying all about the vault. This time, before resealing the seemingly watertight, impenetrable space, a layer of sand was placed on the floor to detect any footprints should the culprits return. After a couple of years with the story percolating among the public, the vault was reopened to check on things, and as the story goes, it was revealed in front of throngs of curious onlookers that the coffins had once again been moved around. Now at this point, all the coffins were removed from the vault and reburied elsewhere in the cemetery. The empty vault remains open to this day, filled with only ghost stories. However, with no coffins to toss around, any malevolent spirit or overly dedicated prankster may have a hard time making themselves known. 
Number 4. Tracer Cave The Rock of Gibraltar's reputation as a war tool is well established. The British Army dug a maze of defensive tunnels inside the rock during the Second World War, and the massive cliff is famous for more than 30 miles of cleared space that served as a housing area for guns, ammunition, barracks, and even hospitals for wounded soldiers. It wasn't until relatively recently, though, that a secret came out about the rock's surprising use during wartime. Hidden in the famous rock is a secret chamber known as the Stay Behind Cave. Measuring 45 by 16 by 8 feet, the enclosure was the site of a top-secret World War II plot called Operation Tracer. In 1940, British intelligence was privy to Hitler's desire to invade Gibraltar and cut off Great Britain from the rest of the British Empire. British admirals suggested that a secret room be constructed within the Rock of Gibraltar, where six men would hide and observe from two small openings any movement they could see on the harbor. The six men were selected, one of whom agreed to Operation Tracer before being told what it was, and the plan to seal the men inside the secret chamber with enough supplies to last them a year was put into action. The only way they would escape back into the outside world would be if Germany was defeated before the year's worth of supplies ran out. Construction of the chamber, which featured a radio room, 10,000 gallons of water, power generator, and other necessities, ended in early 1942. Training was long underway for the six men, but just before Operation Tracer could officially begin, Hitler changed course and started to focus more on the Eastern Front. The six men never began their mission, the equipment was removed, and the section of rock leading to the secret chamber was blocked off. The government never told citizens about Operation Tracer, but for years following the Second World War, rumors persisted of a secret room in the rock. People spent years exploring the tunnels of Gibraltar in hopes of finding this mysterious chamber. On December 26, 1996, a team of explorers from the Gibraltar Caving Group found a chamber within the walls of the rock and speculated that it might be the secret chamber that it had been searching for. It wasn't until a decade later that one of the six men who was supposed to partake in Operation Tracer confirmed that the room the explorers found in 1996 was built for their top secret operation all those years ago. Number 3. Point Pleasant the small town of Point Pleasant, nestled along the banks of the Ohio River in West Virginia, is known for its picturesque landscapes, historic charm, and a legend that's etched itself into the fabric of its identity, the Mothman. In the mid-1960s, Point Pleasant became the epicenter of a series of eerie and perplexing events that would give rise to one of the most enduring cryptozoological mysteries in American folklore, the legend of the Mothman. Described as a tall, winged humanoid with piercing red eyes, the Mothman sightings began in November 1966, when two couples reported a chilling encounter near the abandoned TNT area, a remnant of World War II. Their accounts of this creature's menacing presence, coupled with its unnerving ability to glide through the night sky, set the stage for a wave of both fascination and fear. However, it was the tragic Silver Bridge collapse on December 15, 1967 that thrust the Mothman into the realm of the uncanny. The bridge connecting Point Pleasant to Gallipoli, Ohio, collapsed during rush hour, resulting in the loss of 46 lives. The eerie twist? Reports emerged of Mothman sightings in the vicinity of the bridge leading up to the disaster, creating a sinister connection in the public imagination. Was the Mothman a harbinger of doom, a spectral warning that went unheeded? Well, the mystery of the Mothman phenomenon attracted the attention of author John Keel, whose 1975 book, The Mothman Prophecies, dove into the strange occurrences in Point Pleasant. Keel's work, later adapted into a film, explored not only the Mothman sightings, but also the broader tapestry of inexplicable phenomenon experienced by Point Pleasant residents during that period. The book gave a voice to those who claimed to have witnessed the Mothman and experienced unexplained phenomena like mysterious lights and strange phone calls. Over the decades, Point Pleasant embraced its cryptic residence. The annual Mothman Festival draws enthusiasts from across the country to celebrate this enigmatic creature through lectures, activities, and art. Statues and memorials dedicated to the Mothman dot the town, honoring its place in local lore. The lights and odd calls, however, have since ceased. Whether the Mothman is viewed as a cryptid, a harbinger of doom, or simply a legend that captured the imagination of a community, its legacy endures. Point Pleasant's association with the Mothman has transformed the town into a destination for those intrigued by the unexplained. Weaving an indelible thread of mystery into the town's history, a mysterious, perhaps even fun legacy that continues to captivate, perplex, and inspire wonder. Number 2. Kay's Cross 
The stunning landscape of Utah's Uinta Mountains is home to a mysterious structure that's captivated the imagination of locals and intrigue seekers of the unknown for decades. Kay's Cross is a stone monument located near the town of Kaysville, Utah. However, its origins and purpose remain shrouded in uncertainty, giving rise to a plethora of myths, legends, and speculations. The monument consists of a large stone cross situated on a hillside, flanked by a number of smaller stones arranged in a circular pattern. While this might seem innocuous at first glance, it's the stories that surround Kay's Cross that's turned it into a focal point of intrigue. One of the most persistent legends surrounding it is that it was built by a mysterious man named Kay. According to the tale, Kay was a wealthy landowner who resided near the site of the monument in the early 20th century. He allegedly erected the cross as a memorial to his wife who died tragically, and the surrounding stones were meant to represent the eyes of the people who criticized him for his grieving. As the story goes, Kay was so tormented by the accusations and gossip that he ended his own life at the site of the cross, casting an aura of tragedy over the monument. However, historical records don't support the existence of a man named Kay or any evidence of the story, so naturally this discrepancy has only widened the mystery of Kay's cross. Some locals believe that the cross has ties to ancient Native American rituals or even occult practices. The circular arrangement of stones and the cross itself bear some resemblance to symbols used in esoteric traditions. Others speculate that Case Cross could be a remnant of an early religious or spiritual group that left behind cryptic symbols as part of their practices. The allure of Case Cross draws in both believers and skeptics, all looking for a piece of action. It has become a site for those interested in paranormal investigations, ghost hunting, and supernatural phenomena, and over the years numerous reports have emerged of strange experiences and unexplained occurrences near the monument. Visitors have witnessed eerie lights, heard disembodied voices, and felt a palpable sense of unease, contributing to the site's reputation as a paranormal hotspot. Kay's Cross met an untimely and odd demise in 1992, though, because all that's left of it is rubble. To this day, no one knows who did it or why, but the strange cross was demolished by explosives. Number 1. Oak Island Money Pit Everyone loves a good treasure hunt, and the hunt for treasure on Oak Island has been going on for decades. Without a single return and conflicting theories of what hunters are actually looking for, the so-called Money Pit in Nova Scotia is one of the most incredible self-perpetuating goose chases in the world. In 1795, a teenager named Daniel McGuinness found an oval-shaped recession in the ground on the island. McGuinness and his friends began what would become a long-standing tradition of treasure-seeking in the area. From the beginning of the 19th century onward, many companies formed just to begin their own digging expeditions in the pit, each discovering more quote-unquote evidence and attributing theories to the region. Errol Flynn, John Wayne, and Franklin Roosevelt were at one point each involved in the hunt and held their own theories as to the pit's contents. Some believed pirate treasure lay just below the next layer of soil. Others believed Marie Antoinette's lost jewels were surely buried there right after the French Revolution. Another theory even posited that the Ark of the Covenant lies at the bottom. Well, despite the wild theories, little has ever come out of the pit. Everything ever found in the pit has been attributed to some treasure theory. A cavern found during the dig was deemed a booby trap. Another tunnel leading out of the pit to Smith's Cove was deemed a secret floodway. Any wood found in the tunnel was immediately considered part of the pit's foundation. However, just enough evidence has been found to keep people digging. Among the biggest discoveries was a set of stone inscriptions found 90 feet below the earth. Symbols on the stones were translated as, 40 feet below lie 2 million pounds. Even more promising was the alleged discovery of a few gold pieces. Well, excavations have now gone 190 feet into the earth since the late 18th century, and in many ways the expeditions themselves have become part of the history of Oak Island. It's often difficult to discern what the creators of the pit left and what belonged to treasure hunters, and a stone inscription marked 1701 is even considered by some to be a hoax left by past hunters. Whether the pit is a natural sinkhole, a booby trap pit filled with gems, or one of the world's greatest follies may forever remain a mystery. In 2010, a final treasure hunt was initiated, and nothing. And the government passed the Oak Island Act, banning all commercial treasure hunting on the island. However, in 2011, a new Oak Island Treasure Act invited the hunt to continue, with permission granted from the Minister of Natural Resources. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.